In this tutorial, we're gonna give you an overview of the clip art that is included with your Aspire software. We're gonna show you the various ways to install it, where they're located on your PC, and the special features that some of these files have integrated into them, and then we'll give you a quick guide on how to import and load them into your software. Aspire includes over $5,000 worth of free 2D and 3D clip art for you to use in your projects. And this clip art comes in various formats. Some of it has special features that only Aspire can take advantage of. And there are three ways to get your free clip art installed and available within your software. You can install it directly from the installation media you may have received from Vectric. You can install it from your VNCO account, or you can do it from within the software itself. Now, if you have a product installation USB, you can simply install your clip art uh, and all of your content will be available in your Clipart browser the next time you open up your software. And if you don't have an installation USB, that's not a problem at all. When you purchase your product, you'll be invited to VNCO, and this is where you can access your license details, the installers for your software, along with your free Clipart and project files. Now you'll need to go over to portal.vectric.com to log in, and to log in, you'll need your email address and your password. And once you sign in and verify your email address, then you'll have access to everything that VNCO has to offer. Now to start with, you'll be presented with the download option to download any of your software, your upgrades that you're entitled to, and any clip art that you have on your account as well. You'll also see there's a section for our free projects that you can browse through. You can look at things that we're up to on design and make. You can look at some tips and tricks and also what we're up to in the near future. But if we click on download, you can have a look at your license. Now you can see there's a one next to some of our license here. That means you're due an upgrade or you're eligible for an upgrade. But this is where you can download your uh, software installers and view your license information on your account as well. Now if you click on that, you'll see that all the uh, installers that we're eligible for, and you can see that we've got our products installed at the top here. And we've also got all the clip art that we have available to us as well. Now, if we click on our clip art pack to download it, we can store that somewhere safe. So perhaps in our downloads folder. So we know where it is for later. So we can then go ahead and install our clip art. Then you'll see if I click on the bottom left hand corner there where my download was, I'll start installing my clip art. And then you'll be presented with the clip art setup wizard. And you can go through the license and hit agree after reading it. And once your clip art is installed, you can click finish and it will now be available for you to use in your software. Now, if you choose not to download and install your clip art from either your USB drive or online through your VNCO account, then you can always do it through your software in your clip art tab. Now, if you have a look over here at the top here, where my mouse pointer is, you have your clip art folder and then you have all the different groups of clip art here. So for example, if I click on my borders, you'll notice that at the bottom of the screen here, this will now display anything that is in the borders folder and that is located on my PC. You can see here at the moment, if I hover over the borders, it's got the uh, location of where this clip art is stored on my PC after I've downloaded and installed it. Similarly, if I click on decorative, you can see here that I've got all of the decorative clip art that I've downloaded on my PC. It's all displayed nice and clearly below here. And you've got the names displayed clearly above here for your folders. Now, if we come up to our clip art here, if you can see just above it, there's a cloud button and a refresh button. Now, what this will actually do is if I click on this, it will show me any of the clip art that I'm eligible for that is actually sat on my account. Now, right now it's showing all the clip art that I have here, and that's because I have downloaded and installed all these. But if I come up to my 3D tabs, if I click on the cloud now, you'll see it's showing me any of the clip art that I'm entitled to that is actually on my account. So I can go ahead and now download these. And that's represented by that little download symbol next to uh, the clip art here in the bottom right hand corner of it. Now it's important to note here that to download these, I must have a internet connection and for it to recognize any of the uh, clip art that is available on my account uh, because it will need an internet connection to do that. But there's a couple of different ways you can go ahead and now download these clip art files. And one of which is to actually go ahead and right click on that file and click download. Now you'll notice I've got a prompt here that says login, not logged in. Now this will prompt me to actually log in to the VNCO portal with my account details and my password. So I can now access and download that clip art. So let's go ahead and click the login and refresh button. And then what you'll see is that with your browser, it will pop up 
to our login page or the Vienco login page where you can enter your email and your password. And then when you are logged in, you'll be asked to allow the website to talk with the software. So let's just go ahead and click allow. And now that you'll see that the software has spoken to the website or your VNCO account, and now you have successfully linked your software with your VNCO account. And you can see in the background here, it's refreshed our clip art for us. So let's close down our browser. And now we can move on to the next part of our demonstration. And you'll see now that if I go into my 3D tabs, the truncated tab that we had earlier has now been downloaded. It no longer has that download symbol next to it. Now, of course, you can see the other ones here do, but that's because I haven't chosen to download those yet. But the one I chose earlier has been downloaded. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of different ways that you could download the clip art into your software. Now that we're logged in, we can actually just go ahead and click on one of these that has the download symbol next to it and just drag it into the software. And what will happen is the software will download it. As you might have seen, there was a little green arrow indicating it was downloading. And there it is. There is our clip art now in our software for us to use. And then finally, let's say you would like to download an entire pack of clip art. So let's say you wanted to download all of the domes and dishes you had available on your VNCO account. Well, you could simply just come over and right click on this and click download and that will actually download all of the domes and dishes that you have available on your VNCO account as a pack. Now it's important to note that no matter which methodology you use to download and install your clip art, it will always be found on your PC at the following location, which is the C drive, users, public, public documents, Vectric, and Clipart. And you'll find that any of the packs that you have downloaded will be displayed here. So you can see right now I've got all these packs displayed here because I've downloaded these. So for example, if I go into animals, you'll see that I have all the Clipart here for the animals that I've downloaded from my VNCO account ready to use within the software. Now let's just take a second and discuss that how we can actually get our clip art into our job in the background here. So right now you can see I've got the animals clip art folder location open. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on one of these. So I'm going to choose a wading moose here. I'm going to click on this and hold down my left click and drag it into the background onto our software here. And if I minimize this Windows Explorer window, you'll see I now have the clip art within the software. Now, if I just delete that out, I can show you another way of doing it. If we pop over to our modeling tab, we can choose import a component or 3D model. And if we click on that, I can open up the location again for my public documents, Vectric files, clip our animals. And I'm just going to right click in this folder, change the view to large icons. So you can see which clip art you have represented by the symbol or the uh, icon for it. And this time I'm actually going to choose the bass here. I'm just going to Click on this and you'll see that it's imported it now into our software for us as well. But let's just delete that and have a look at a final way of bringing in a clip art, which is one you may be familiar with from earlier on in our tutorial, which is to simply go over to the clip art tab, choose the pack that you would like to use, and then just to click on the clip art that you would like and just drag it over to your worksheet and drop it in there. And there we are, there is our clip art ready to use. Now let's say you've downloaded a file temporarily to your downloads folder and you want to access your clip art from there. Well, you still can. What you can actually do is you can go up to the local files option at the top here. So if you click on this tab and you can navigate to the folder that your clip art is in. If I, you can see here, I've pressed the plus symbol next to C here. I've gone down to public, public documents, Vectric files clip art, and I've got my animals folder just here and I can drag that in from here now. So for example, if I just delete out this horse for the moment, I'll just drag this in and there we are. So you can drag it in that way as well from a local file location. Now, I know I've shown you it from our clip art location on my PC, but for example, you could just go from your local files to see downloads and you could get your file from there, for example. So I hope that gives you a plethora of options that you can uh, use to import your clip art. Now, some of the designs that come in the software actually come in 
three different forms. And the best way to show you this is if I tile my views vertically by clicking the button at the top right here. And I'm just going to make sure that I drag in some of these 3D clip art. So I'm just going to click on the bass here, bring it in just about there. Just going to bring it down just ever so slightly so the fin's not touching the edge. There we are, and you can see it's raised from our modeling plane there. So this is actually raised up from our modeling plane. Let's just reset our view back down. And I'll bring the second version here, the type B. Now this is actually in a smooth dish. You can see it's got a smooth dish here. Now uh, there is actually a video we've got on our website on how to create uh, clip art within a dish like this. Uh, and if you would like to know more about that, that'll be in the link below for you. But let's just size that down a little bit so we can get our final uh, design in. I'm just going to click on this point here and just drag that down just a little bit. I'll do the same with the top one as well, just so they look roughly the same. And finally, I'll bring in our third design, which is a carved uh, recess. Now, that looks more like a hand carved kind of look there. You can see around the edge of the bass here. If I just drag that back onto our worksheet a little bit, I'll just size it down just a little bit. And there we are, you can see there, you've got that almost hand carved looking finish there on this bass. Now, if I come across to my modeling tab and if I add in a zero plane here, and if I come to the view, and I'm gonna turn the modeling plane off, that'll just make it a bit clearer for us to see what's going on here. So if I just zoom in a little bit, you'll see that you've got your design A here, which is raised above the plane, you've got your design B, which is in the dish here, and it's meeting the curves of the dish itself. And you've got the uh, final one, which is your C, which is in our uh, carved recess here as well. Okay, so with that example done, let's just go back down our view here, and we're just gonna delete those out and have a look at some other examples in the software. So if we pop back over to our clip art tab, we're gonna come down, scroll down in the top here in our library folders, and we're gonna come down to our weaves over here. And you'll notice that with our weaves, we have, after each one, we have the letter I. So you've got I here, then you've got weave 11 with two eyes, and then weave 11 with three eyes. Uh, or you can call these one, two, and three, if that's easier as well. And let's just have a look at some of these in our software as well. So if I just drag in the first weave, just going to pop that in the left hand corner but I'm also going to size it down just a little bit so we can make sure we can get all three weaves that we're going to look at onto our worksheet there we are let's just move that down just a tad and I'll pull in weave two or weave ii and let's just scale that down just a little bit as well but we want it clear in our view here because we're going to illustrate the differences between them and we'll bring in our final one weave 12 number three and let's just scale that down as well. And you can clearly see the differences between these when you look on our 3D view here. You can see that the first one has more of a domed kind of smooth curve to it here. And this one has a more of a flat beveled edge on number two here. And the third one has more of a ribbon look to it. And you, this is a great way you can see some of the differences by just dragging and dropping the clip art into your software to have a look at what they look like and what they may potentially look like when you come to cut them later on. So this is a great little view you've got here to uh, try and preview what you would like to cut out later on. So you know that if you'd like more of a smoother finish, you may want to go for the weave in the top left, for example. But let's just zoom back down on our view. And now let's have a look at some of the content that you may see if you were an Aspire customer. Now, when you download and install your packs of 3D and 2D content, you're gonna be able to take a look through those and you're gonna see some obvious things that look different when we're talking about our 3D content. So for example, if we look over at our 3D thumbnails over here, you'll notice that some of the clip art is actually a darker color than some of the other clip art. And what that means is, is that the darker content is actually a file type that is called a 3D clip. And a 3D clip file has some pretty interesting things or interesting properties about it that they can include a single component or they can actually include multiple components on them as well. So to try and illustrate that, we can go ahead and look at one of these files, which is a V3M file. And we can look at 
one under our decorative clip art. I'm going to choose this one just here called C scroll X. And you'll note that it has an X at the end. That means it's actually got a piece of clip art that's made of groups. So let's click on that and drag it into our job space. Okay, so let's look at our model in 3D view. So if we come up to our tiled views by clicking on the vertical tiled view up top here, you can see the representation of our clip art in 3D over on the right hand side here, but we're also going to come across to our modeling tab. Now you'll see that this is called C scroll X. Now the X means it's made up of a group of components and then you'll see that there's a plus sign next to the component. Now if I click on the plus sign, you'll notice that this is now made up of a single component and some grouped components. You can see that these components here are actually grouped because there's a plus sign next to those. Now, if I turn them on and off, you can see what's actually happening here. So you can see how this is actually built together. So if I turn off the platform and you can see the petal is sitting on the platform there and you've got the scroll around it and then we have the platform as well. Now, to see what's going on and how we actually built this up, I'm going to actually ungroup this. So I'm just going to click on the main component tree here. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to choose ungroup. Now you'll notice that these are now their own individual components. And I can again turn these on and off as I need to. But let's have a look at the petal, for instance, and let's have a look at how this is actually built up. So let's turn off our platform, turn off our scroll, and let's have a look at the petal. And keep your eye on the 3D view here as I open up this menu. So if I click open this menu, you'll see that it has individual components that make up this petal. So you have this component here at the top here, which is a petal. Let me just ungroup this so I can click on these individually. So right click, ungroup, and you'll see that the petal now is made up of all these individual petals and the middle here, which help to give it that look of a flower there, which is really nice. And the same thing that goes to the scroll here, you can see that it's made up of multiple uh, components. Now I'm actually just going to turn off our petal. So the way I can do that is actually just by clicking on the bottom one here, holding shift, clicking on the top to highlight them all, and then clicking the check next to them. And I'm actually going to minimize our group for our scroll here. And what I will do is ungroup these. So right click, ungroup, and then what I'm going to do again is I'm actually going to turn all the other ones off. So if I just minimize our groups here next to each one, and I'm actually going to turn off all but one of these scrolls. So I'm just going to click on the bottom one and click on the second from top, click on the check mark to turn them off. And then we are, we have now have our one group visible for one of our scrolls. And I'm going to right click that one and I will ungroup this one. And now what you'll see is that that singular scroll was actually made up of three different components. You can see that here by clicking it. And you can see that it's actually made up of three different pieces of clip art. Now, what's really great about this is that because you have a spy, you can actually save off your own 3D clip file. So if you have a group of components that you think you're going to want to always use grouped or that they're important to have grouped, you can uh, ungroup them, edit them and group them up later again, and then you can go ahead and export out your groups. And it's just as easy as right clicking on a group. So let's just do that actually. Let's um, select all of these and we're gonna group these all together. So I'm gonna click the bottom one, hold shift and left click on the bottom, on the top one, sorry. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna group these all together and then I'm gonna right click on our group here. And I'm just gonna choose this option here to export as 3D clip art and it really is that easy. So you can export your own 3D clip art after you have made your own models in Aspire. Another good example of a piece of 3D clip art work that we give you with Aspire will be in the same folder here under clip art called decorative. And it is the corner post just here. So let's just bring that in to the middle of our worksheet. And again, let's tile our view. So let's have a look at this in 3D view as well. And I'm going to pop over to my modeling tab. And once again, you can see that this uh, corner post is actually made up of several different components here. So if I just turn these all off, you can start to see how this is all made together. So you can see we've got our decorative piece of the top there, our decoration on the bottom, 
our round bit that they sit on, our wedges either side of the clip art here, and finally we have the rounded outer here on the top and the bottom. And this is actually a great way of looking at the clip art because not only does this allow you to swap out some of the elements of this clip art that you may want to change. For example, you may want something different than the decoration you have in the middle here, and you can swap those out with something else. But it also allows you to perhaps show or teach someone or help someone learn how these models are made and how they are compromised and how they come together. Let's take a look at some of the other interesting content that you get with Aspire. So if you come down to your clip art and click on this folder here on texture area tiles, you'll notice that these are uh, clip art or tileable pieces of clip art. So for example, if I bring in this block wall just here, if I pop that into the middle of the worksheet, I'm just going to scale that down a bit so I can show you some of the things that you can actually do with this. I'm going to take this and put it off of the actual worksheet. I'm just going to scroll out a little bit and then scroll down. Okay, so with our new tileable texture or our texture area tile selected, we can actually go to the modeling tab and we can choose this tool just here, create a textured area component. Now, there is a video that actually goes into a lot more depth concerning this form here, uh, and I would highly suggest you watch that. But for the moment, I'm just gonna use the defaults that we have in this form just here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click apply. And you'll notice what the software has done is that it's, taking, it's taken that uh, texture tile and it has applied it across the worksheet. So you have a full wall here. You can see in the 3D view here, you have a full wall of that texture, which is really, really great. And you can see in the modeling tab as well, that you've now got this separate component here, which is this entire wall. And you still have your original block wall just here. If I turn that back on, hidden away here at the bottom, I can just turn that back off and you'll see that it'll hide that for you as well. And there we are, that is one large tiled area and that obviously has a lot of great uses when it comes to uh, giving some of your projects some texture. But for now I'm just going to go ahead and delete these. So I'm just going to select both these by holding shift and clicking on both of them. Right click and delete. Now we go back over to our clip art tab. You'll notice that we have this here which is our texture fill tiles. I'm not going to go over that right now. There's a whole dedicated video if you do want to learn more about this and I highly suggest that you go and watch that if you're interested. But what we're gonna have a look at next is the textures that are not tileable just here. Now, these are perfect for uh, the background of signs or any footing in any signs. And these are actual bitmaps that we've created textures from. So if we take a look at one of these, for example, if I drag this onto here, for example, I'm just going to size that down because it's rather large at the moment. So I'm just going to click on this anchor point here. I'm just going to size that down. I'm going to grab it and put it into the middle of our worksheet. And again, just size that down a little bit more. So we can have a look at that. And that is actually a bark. That is a bark texture that you can use. And this is actually really nice to use on uh, some backgrounds of signs. And you can actually get quite creative and you can... Uh, use this for all sorts of things. You could use it for a texture on walls or even when you're doing a layout with clip art, you may want to use these just to add, kind of add a little bit of extra roughing to a board or maybe the face of a rock. Now we actually include some free content in the form of actual Aspire files, which are .crv 3D files. So let's have a look at one of those right now. So if we come up to file and open, and if we navigate over to the clip art folder on your PC. I'm going to choose this file just here in our ribbons and banners uh, folder under the clip art folder. I'm going to choose ribbon number one and click open. And I just pop up to tile our views horizontally so we can have a let a look at our ribbon. You can see it's got quite a lot of folds in here so that's your really really nice decorative ribbon here and I think we can use that for a lot of projects. So let's just look back down on that and let's pop over to our modeling tab. Now you'll see that this file actually contains two components. If I just uh, minimize that view just there, and you'll see that one, which is a group, as you can see at the top here, and you'll see one, which is called uh, ribbon one group baked. So this is the result of what is included inside of this group. Now, if I actually just 
turn off our baked one here and I turn on our group. And then if I right click it and ungroup it, you'll notice it's now broken up into two different groups. We've got left group and right group. So you can turn these off independently to show which uh, of these uh, is showing on the screen at the present time. And you can also have a deeper look at the group itself. And you can see that it's actually made up if I uh, ungroup one of these, so I'll ungroup the right one, for example, that it's made up of individual folds that we used to end up making this final ribbon. Now, this is everything that is typically included in something like a 3D clip file, but because this is a CRV 3D file, we also include vectors. So if we come up to our layers at the top here, you'll see that we've actually got our sweep vectors. So if I just turn those on, and these are the sweeps that we actually use in the uh, two rail sweeps that we use to actually create some of the ribbons here. So it's actually these uh, lines here, cross sections that we've got, uh, and rails that we use here at the bottom to actually make these folds. And then if I turn on this layer just here for our outline vectors and turn off our sweep vectors, uh, this is the outline that we use to crop off those two rail sweeps when we were actually done with them. Now, if you're interested in how that all works, there's actually a whole tutorial based on how to build ribbons. And you can watch that and you'll actually see how we use those vectors to create a finished ribbon, uh, which is what we see. If I close down all of these, if I just turn these all off, and if I turn on our finished ribbon here, and that is the end result of that process. We also give you another set of clip art that is delivered to you as a CRV 3D file. And those are our weaves. So if we go up and click on File, Open, we're going to navigate to our weaves folder this time under our clip art folder. So if you locate that on your computer by going to Public, Public Documents, Vectric Files, Clip Art, and Weaves, and you can see we've got a ton of weaves here that we can choose from. But we're going to choose the top one here and just open that up. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that there isn't any 3D component. And even in the modeling tree, uh, there isn't any components here. But if you go up to the Layers tab, you'll notice that we've given you all kinds of different vector layers. So first of all, this layer here is just the uh, basic kind of starting pattern that we give you. And then we have the cross sections that you can use to actually extrude along these lines to create the weaves. And we also give you some alternate paths and some variations on the initial path. So you can actually create some really uh, unique looking weaves here. So you can uh, choose one of these and you can extrude along one of these to really create some unique looking patterns here. And that looks really, really nice. Now, if you wanna know more about how to actually create these weaves, there's actually a great tutorial on our website. And I highly recommend that you go watch that because it's very interesting and I'm sure it will no doubt prove very useful in any projects that you have that include any weaves. So once you've installed or downloaded and installed the clip art that you would like, I highly recommend that you go take a look through those and explore all the different options that you have, as they certainly will help you to learn the software quicker and easier, but also should add to your projects in the end. And as usual, I hope you very much enjoy this tutorial, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you for your time.